Hello everybody. For this video lecture we're going to be doing some practice with price elasticity of demand. So because it's the beginning of a new ski season here in Switzerland I thought we'd look at the market for ski lift tickets in Switzerland. In this market the demand for ski lift tickets can be expressed using the equation QD equals 25,000 minus 312.5 P. We can determine a few things from this equation. We know that at a price of 80 francs the quantity demanded will be equal to zero ski lift tickets. However, if the price of ski lift tickets were zero, in other words free, only 25,000 ski lift tickets would be demanded. So using this information we can begin to calculate the price elasticity of demand for ski lift tickets between a series of prices. To calculate the price elasticity of demand we must have a few price and quantity combinations to work with. As we know, the PED for a particular good measures the responsiveness of consumers to a price change of, for that good. The PED equation or formula is the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. If we have two prices and two quantities, then we can find the PED by using the more complicated formula on the right here. Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1 would give us the percentage change in the quantity. P2 minus P1, that's a new price, minus an old price divided by P1, the old price, will give us the percentage change in the price. So looking at our graph here, we've identified a few prices, 70 francs, 50 francs, 30 francs, and 10 francs. Before we can calculate PED, the first thing we have to do is determine the quantities that correspond with each, with each of these prices. To do that, we'll use our demand equation and plug the four different prices into the demand equation to derive Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Here we've plugged the four different prices into our demand equation. All we need to do now is solve for each of these equations to find the quantities demanded at each of these prices. Now we know four different quantities that correspond with the four prices we have on our graph over here. What we can do now is apply these quantities to our PED formula and find the percent change in quantity between P1 and P2, between P2 and P3, and between P4 and P5. Then we'll have the price elasticities of demand for ski lift tickets at a range of prices ranging from 70 francs to 10 francs. Let's plug these numbers into the PED equation now to find the different elasticities of demand. When we use the quantities Q2 and Q1 to find the price elasticity of demand between P1 and P2, we get the following result. First we have to use Q2, which in this case is 9,375, and subtract Q1, which was 3,125. To find the percent change in quantity, we divide by the original quantity of 3,125. Our new price is 50 francs. The old price was 70 francs. So to find the percentage change in price, we do 50 minus 70 and divide it by the original price of 70. This gives us uh, the percentages expressed in terms of uh, de decimals. So we have a 200% increase in the quantity demanded resulting from a 28.5% decrease in the price. This gives us a PED coefficient of 2 divided by 0.285, which is 7. We know that the price elasticity of demand between 70 and 50 francs is 7. We'll interpret this later on. To calculate the price elasticities of demand between 50 francs and 30 francs and between 30 francs and 10 francs, we can apply the same method using instead Q3 and Q2 and then Q4 and Q3 in combination with P3 and P2 and P4 and P3. We'll go ahead and solve for the PEDs between these other prices at this time. Here we've calculated the price elasticities of demand between 50 and 30 francs and then between 30 and 10 francs. As we can see, as the price of ski lift tickets falls from 70 francs to 50 francs and then from 50 francs to 30 francs and finally from 30 francs to 10 francs, the price elasticity of demand falls. This is interesting because if you look at our line, we see it is clearly a linear demand curve indicating that the slope of the demand curve is constant. However, as the price of ski lift tickets falls, consumers become less and less responsive to further price decreases. We're going to explore the reasons for this next. Let's now interpret the price elasticities of demand between the prices that we looked at in the example previously. Between 70 francs and 50 francs, the PED was quite high, indicating that demand for ski lift tickets is very responsive to price changes when the price is very high. For every 
1% decrease in the price of lift tickets, 7% more lift tickets are sold. In other words, consumers are relatively responsive to price changes when the price is high. Let's look at what happens when the price falls from 50 francs to 30 francs. The price elasticity of demand is now 1.67. This means that for every 1% decrease in the price of lift tickets, the quantity demanded or quantity sold increases by 1.67%. Therefore, consumers are much less responsive than they were at the higher price of 70 francs. Between 50 francs and 30 fr francs, demand is still elastic because the PED coefficient is greater than 1. However, it is much less elastic than it was at the higher prices when we saw that the uh, price elasticity of demand coefficient was much greater. Finally, between 30 francs and 10 francs, demand has become inelastic because the coefficient is now less than 1. Now, for every 1%, increase, sorry, decrease in price, the quantity demanded only increases by 0.6%. Therefore, we can conclude that at lower prices, consumers of ski lift tickets in Switzerland are much less responsive than they are at higher prices. So what we've seen is that as the price of lift tickets falls from the high price of 70 francs to the low price of 10 francs, the price elasticity of demand decreases. What are some reasons for this? Let's discuss some possible reasons for why demand becomes less elastic as the price of a particular good falls even along a straight line demand curve. One reason is that as the price of lift tickets falls, they make up a smaller proportion of the typical consumer's income. Therefore, we become less responsive to continued price decreases. The rationale here is that at high prices, a, a, a decrease of a particular percentage is quite noticeable because something goes from being a luxury enjoyed only by those who can afford to ski in this case to becoming a typical item that a consumer of even a medium income level might be able to enjoy. So the rationale is that as the price of lift tickets falls, more and more consumers begin skiing. As the price continues to fall, there are fewer additional consumers who can continue to buy lift tickets. The market for skiing in Switzerland becomes increasingly saturated, meaning that pretty much everybody who wants to ski is already skiing at 30 francs. If the price continues to fall to 10 francs, it becomes harder and harder to attract more consumers to the market. Therefore, the PED becomes smaller and smaller as the price gets closer to zero. Next, we're going to talk about the impact that the price elasticity of demand for a good such as ski lift tickets has on the revenues of producers of that good, in this case, ski resorts in Switzerland, as the price of the good changes. And total revenue is simply the price of a good times the quantity of the good sold. So we were given four different price and quantity combinations. We should be able to calculate the total revenues in the ski industry in Switzerland at each of these prices. Here we've calculated the total revenues for the ski industry in Switzerland at each of the four prices. At 70 francs when 3,125 tickets are sold, total revenue is 218,750 francs. As the price falls, we see that at first total revenue increases, but as con price continues to fall to 30 francs and then to 10 francs, we see at first total revenue remains constant at 468,000, and then total revenue begins to fall again. If we plot these points on a total revenue diagram, when the quantity is on the horizontal axis and the total revenue instead of price is on the vertical axis, we can see what happens to total revenue as the quantity of lift tickets sold increases and the price decreases. Let's plot these four points and plot two additional points on this graph at this time. Here we've plotted points that correspond with the four prices we've identified as P1 through P4. We can actually plot two additional points on this graph. We know that if the price of ski lift tickets were zero, the quantity sold would be exactly 25,000. Therefore, the total revenue at a price of zero would be zero times 25,000. 
We also know that if, if the price were 80 francs, then the quantity demanded would be zero. Therefore, at a quantity of zero, the total revenue is also zero. Once we've had these six points plotted on our graph, we can connect these dots and what we end up with is a total revenue curve for the ski market in Switzerland. We can see that as the quantity of ski lift tickets sold increases, at first the total revenue of our ski resorts in Switzerland will increase, but at a certain point total revenue will plateau and begin to decrease. And if the price continues to fall and the quantity sold continues to increase, the total revenue will actually decrease. Now there's a very important reason for this total revenue curve. Whenever demand is elastic for ski lift tickets or the PED coefficient is greater to one, greater than one, a decrease in price will lead to an increase in total revenue since a particular percentage decrease in price will result in a greater percentage increase in quantity. So anytime total revenue increases, PED is greater than one. However, if a decrease in price leads to a fall in total revenue, as it does here, all the way down to the total revenue of zero, this can only occur if the PED, the demand for ski lift tickets, is less than one or inelastic because a particular percentage decrease in price must have led to a smaller percentage increase in the quantity demanded. Therefore, the total revenues of ski operators in Switzerland will fall. But what if we are at the peak of the total revenue curve? If a decrease in price leads to no change in total revenue, we can conclude that the PED is equal to one. The rationale here is that if the price falls by a particular percentage and the quantity increases by an identical percentage, there should be little or no change in the total revenues of ski operators in Switzerland. The total revenue test of price elasticity of demand can be summarized in the following way. If a decrease in price leads to an increase in total revenue, then the price elasticity of demand must be greater than one and demand must be elastic. However, if a decrease in price leads to a decrease in total revenue, then price elasticity of demand must be less than one and demand must be inelastic. Finally, if a decrease or an increase in price leads to no change in total revenue, then PED must be equal to one, indicating that the percent change in quantity resulting from the price change will be exactly the same as the percentage change in price, and therefore there will be no change in the revenues of producers. The total revenue test can be used to determine whether demand is elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic for a good without actually having to calculate the price elasticity of demand coefficients. Looking back at our original demand curve, we can conclude that anywhere between 80 francs and approximately 40 francs, demand for ski lift tickets is elastic. This is because as the price fell from 80 to 40 francs, the total revenues of ski producers in Switzerland actually increased, indicating that consumers are relatively responsive to price changes. However, below $40 or 40 francs, Further decreases in price led to decreases in the total revenue of the ski industry. Therefore, the PED must be less than one. Somewhere between 50 and 30 francs, we can assume around 40 francs, total revenue did not change when price changed. Therefore, the PED must be equal to or nearly equal to one. This concludes our lesson on price elasticity of demand and the total revenue test. To conclude, let's just review some of the things we talked about. Changes in price that lead to an increase in total revenue, if it's a decrease in price, indicate that demand must be elastic and the PED coefficient must be greater than one. If a change in price leads to no change in revenue, however, though, however, we can conclude that consumers are identically responsive as the change in price. Therefore, the PED must be equal to one. If a decrease in the price of a good leads to a decrease in the total revenue, then the price elasticity of demand must be less than one and demand is inelastic.